This session is going to be about the displacement modifier. And before we start off, we need a texture for the replacement mod displacement modifier to work. So I'm just going to create a clouds texture here. Where is it there? And call it clouds. And I'm also going to create a blend texture. I'll just call this blend. And um, then I'm just going to uh, select the modifier, displace, and also select my texture over here. And you can see Suzanne gets horribly disfigured. And that is, by default, the displacement modifier is way too strong. So I'm just going to turn this down over here, and you can see how she's going back into her original form. And um, I can, of course, limit this to the vertex group, but uh, yeah, that's almost every modifier. But um, the important or the interesting thing about the displacement modifier is actually the texture coordinates. And um, normally, actually, let's move this to layer number two and add a plane and just subdivide this a couple of times. And uh, for example, the displacement modifier can be used to simulate water surfaces. Um, again, I'll turn down the strength and set this to smooth. And I'm going to insert an empty. And this empty will be my input, uh, my texture coordinate input. You can, of course, use the UV coordinates. I mean, that speaks for itself. Global, that's an interesting one. If you choose global, then um, the uh, clouds texture will be m mapped to the entire world. That means if you move your um, object around, um, this the texture will stay in place, so it will appear as if the the object was sort of crawling over a surface that is the world normal map or the world um, clouds texture. Anyways, um, if I choose object, and this is the most interesting part, I can actually move the object. Of course, I have to select an object for that. Select the empty. If I now move the object, you can see that I get um, a movement in the direction of the object. So if you want ripples for your um, scene, you can sort of make this like it's flowing water or something. If you want to change the evolution like you would in After Effects, you can move this in Z direction because the algorithm is actually in 3D. That means if I move this up in Z, the uh, clouds texture is sort of uh, just um, changing randomly. I can also change the scale of this, obviously. But what's interesting about it, I can change the scale, for example, just in the uh, x direction. So I can uh, make this wider, which is, can also be a, a really nice effect. And um, if I choose um, the direction, the direction in z, you can see that. Um, this is the local z axis of the object. Clear the rotation of Suzanne, then you can see that everything is going up, all the displacement. I can, of course, do the same thing with x and y, but um, usually it's uh, best to leave this at normal because that would mean it would, uh, loosely translated, go from the center of the object to the outside. And also the RGB to xyz does sort of a similar thing as the normals would be. You probably have to use a red, green, blue texture in order to make this actually work. Um, now let's talk about the mid-level. The mid-level is fairly important because if you want to have a texture, or let's just um, let's just take this clouds texture and modify it a little. Right here, if I set this to be somewhat uh, dark, and also this to be somewhat dark. Uh, no, this is kind of... Okay, you can see how Suzanne is shifting. And even though... If I just delete this one, if I move this slider up, you can see um, Suzanne is shifting. And that is because white means go outside, uh, away from the center, and black means go inside, so towards the center. That means if I want a texture that, dis that does no displacement, or a part of a texture that does no displacement, then I need exactly middle gray, which would be um, 0.256, I think, no, 0.5, 0.5 in all of those slots. That would mean 
no displacement whatsoever. But if your texture is black and white and you don't and you only want the black to affect the texture, then you put the mid level to zero. And if it's white and you only want the blacks to affect your monkey, then you put the mid levels to one. So if your object is offset even though it's not supposed to, just try and play with the mid level se settings. Okay. Now I'm going to shut off both of these textures and um Actually, I'm going to uh, insert another object. I'm going to insert a me a curve, and I'm going to make this object a. Uh, I'm going to get a bevel object for this curve, a a circle, and just choose this as the bevel object over here. And uh, if I go to the modifiers, you can see there is no displacement available. But um, a lot of the times you want your curve to be displaced as well. So there is a simple solution. You can go into, I'm just going to choose the old material. You can go into the material objects and actually down here under geometry you can check displace. And that means now the cloud's texture will affect the displace of this. And uh, I should probably use a layer where there is a light on. Of course, I should also use an actual clouds texture and not one where I deleted the ramp. So I'm going to make this black and like this. And, um, okay, let's try this again. There you go. Even though no displacement modifier is applied to this, it still works with the material options of the displacement. Okay, there is one more thing. I want to show you about the displacement modifier and I'm going to choose the blend texture for that. And um, you can see now, if I go into front mode, you can see how Suzanne's face is distorted because uh, the... I'm going to put this to normal. Okay, the left side is not distorted at all. This is where the texture is transparent and the right side is very distorted. And um, actually, maybe the monkey isn't the best example, so I'm going to add a cube for that. And I'm going to scale this in X direction and insert a couple of loop cuts. And uh, if you want to copy a modifier, you select the object, then the one with the modifiers last, and press Ctrl L, and select modifiers. And you can now see that the cube, or my, uh, my cubic object, is now displaced from left to right. And the great thing about this is that um, if you have a blend texture, it's not always obvious um, from which direction to which direction the blend texture will work. And um, also, it's uh, that also goes, of course, for clouds textures. So if you have uh, troubles figuring out uh, which direction your um, or which coordinates your texture will use in the final render, you don't have to render all the time. All you need to do is apply a um, is apply a displacement modifier that uses the exact coordinates of your clouds texture or whatever texture you want to use. And also the procedural textures do not show up in the GLSL um, preview, so um, not even you can even um, work around that issue. So in conclusion, the displacement modifier can be used to offset a text to offset a surface in a random way, which is often very useful. Can you be used to create animated ripples on water, and it can be used to actually test your texture coordinates inputs. Uh, I guess that's it for the displacement modifier. Tomorrow we'll have a look at the hook modifier.